Hi, I'm Rian, a Sanotip artist, and let's do some experiments. Today I'm trying out different editing techniques for digital negatives for Cyanotype. I did a deep dive rabbit hole thing for a somewhat ambitious uni assignment um, earlier this year. You can see that here. <laughs> yeah, where I needed to understand what would make a good negative and ended up with my own method of curve editing. Um, it's not a really straightforward method, but I can kind of show you what the curves do to a negative. <laughs> Recently I was watching a video on Prussian Blue's YouTube channel that referenced Mike Ware's one step levels method. And so as I'm curious and want to know how much of my life I've wasted faffing about with curves, um, we're going to try the same image making ne negatives without any editing apart from making it black and white and inverting it etc. Um, and then we're going to do what I would do myself with curves and then I'm going to try this one step method um, with the levels in Photoshop. So I've got this image, um, I'm having a bit of a thing about like nature overcoming man-made stuff. Um, so this is one of my pictures I've taken recently. I really like, I think it's got a lot of um, a lot of detail and so I kind of want to see what detail I can um, make happen with these negatives and these methods. So I'm just duplicating my image. Um, so I've got one for no edit, one for curves and one for levels. So to make it black and white, you can do this a few ways. Um, so I think a lot of people will go to image adjustments and then black and white. I don't like to do this because then the image is just black and white. What I prefer to do is to go to layers and new adjustment layer and then choose in black and white from there. Um, you can also do this in the panel if you've got adjustments um, sort of above where the layers are. Um, but this is just the way that I do it. Everyone's got their way of doing things, right? So, um, so again, you can go to image adjustments and invert to make the negative. Um, but I don't like to do that either because I like to be able to switch back and forth to, to keep the original image. So we're going to go again to layer, new adjustment layer and invert it from there. And you can see here, you can switch it on and off and kind of see what you're working with. And I know that doesn't help really, but I kind of like to keep that reference of the, the original picture in my head. Um, and so then you also want to, you also want to go to image, um, image rotation, and then you want to flip it horizontally. We do this because we want to process the image with the ink side of the negative um, touching the sensitized paper. And I don't know why people do that. Um, I was doing it the other way around originally before I kind of knew you should do it um, ink side down. Um, but apparently you want the ink as close to the sensitized paper as possible um, because even that tiny little fraction of a millimeter thickness of the acetate um, will not make the picture as clear as it could be um, so yeah so that's what I do there <laughs> and then I'm just going to print so this is the no edit negative and I can see here already that it's going to be very dark because a lot of it is very clear um, and so obviously whatever is clear, whatever you can see there, that is the cyanotype chemistry that is going to turn blue and going to be dark. So I can see there already. I know this is going to be a really, really dark print. I don't know if anyone wants to know about my setup for my, um, <laughs> my makeshift, um, light box. Um, but yeah, I had one I much preferred before, but, um, my ADHD partner threw it away thinking it was just a box. It did let me though get a bigger box to do my my processing in, um, which allowed me to put an A3 framing, which I quite like doing because I don't get clip marks on the picture, unless I'm doing an A3 picture, of course. Um, so here we go. Let's see.
yeah there's not much detail there at all um i mean quite often when you you look at the print before it's washed you can see there's it looks like there's no detail and then when you wash it there's loads of detail um but yeah this is not a good good print um climbing over the dog into the kitchen trying to get some magic happening <laughs> yeah and I can see there that it's just dark 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 I'm just not happy at all um, it's lost a lot of the detail especially the top third of the picture has lost a lot of the detail um, I do have um, I do use a hydrogen peroxide bath because um, I'm impatient and I don't want to wait a day I like the magic of that happening so yeah you can see here it's just super super dark um, missing loads of detail around these parts even that's not really helped it's, it's created a little bit more detail in the detail you could already see um, but those really dark areas that I'd like to think we can get some detail with some editing of the negative um, so yeah I mean not too bad but it's not ideal So that's the scan of the picture afterwards when it's all dry and you can see in these parts are the parts that I'm really not happy with um, so hopefully we can get some detail in that um, so now we're on to the curves method and so here I'm just showing how if you go to image adjustments and curves this is what you get and so this is why I like to create the adjustment layer because now that's just the the basic image is altered with that and I can't then go in and, and swap out any of the levels or it's just all I could do is undo and start again and that's really annoying so what I want to do is go and make the adjustment layer with layer adjustment layers or in adjustments um, where just above there and then as you can see I'm just getting an idea of like what um, what contrast I can change and the whole point of doing this um, and I'll mess about with it for a while but the whole point of doing this is I want to create as much tone as possible without losing the finer details so I want to be able to see all of the the little branches at the top there and I want to be able to see all of the leaves and maybe even like the veins in the leaves and things like that so when I make it too dark when I increase that contrast you lose the little veins in the leaves and I think we can keep that and then also keep all of those little branches that are at the top of the picture and then also maybe some of the detail in the stone as well so I've got no like real method for this it literally is just practice and then what I know the tones need to look like to get the picture that I want and so with this as well what I might also do is save um, this is a preset um, so if I, <laughs> I like a set of curves um, and I want to maybe go back to that if I try multiple ones um, so yeah I'm just comparing now compared to the, the other the other picture the the unedited and you can see how much more tone I've put in this now um, editing the curves um, and you can see that this uh, negative has a lot more detail in it as well even um, and is a lot darker Just to talk about adjustment layers a bit more um, you can also um, add multiple curve adjustment layers so you can turn one off and switch another one on and move between those so you've always got this like constant reference that you can turn on and off um, in the image so this has come through lovely I was so excited when I saw this picture um, it just felt so so rich in 
texture um, and I was really happy to get the finer details of those leaves. Um, the top was still a little bit dark but I'm not sure I could do much better to be honest. I think it just it is what it is but certainly had a lot more detail in those little branches at the top. Yeah, the peroxide just really helps give it that bit of depth. I do find though, <laughs> it might be me using too much peroxide, but I do find afterwards when it's dried, it's not as bright as when it's wet with the peroxide. Um, I'm not sure how to, <laughs> not sure how to keep it like that, but I'm generally happy with my prints and the, the levels of tone in them. So that's the scan when the image was dried. And so now we're gonna try this magical one step levels method with levels again you can go to image adjustments and levels but i'm going to do a layer new adjustment layer and levels so this is the the section from um, Mike Ware's book Cyanonomicon is excellent it's probably the best cyanotype book I've read it's got so much history to it and so much more um, technical information that I've read in any other book and I've got a lot of cyanotype books um, but you can actually download a pdf of this book for free um, from mikeware.co.uk I'll leave a, a link down below um, so you can just go and download it because I think it's great. Um, and then he's also got other books that you can buy but um, that I've not read. But the Cyanonomicon I think is is the, <laughs> the book um, for cyanotype information to be honest. Um, so anyway this is the section of that book um, and I was kind of blown away when I read this um, and I was so excited to try it. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if we prepare to accept an approximate transformation, it becomes unnecessary to use experimentally derived curves, with all their burdensome and inaccurate measuring of many experimental points, because essentially the same result comes from resetting one parameter in Photoshop. This parameter is the middle slider in the levels histogram window, which controls the gamma or contrast value shown in the central box and which always has a default value of one when the window is opened. The gamma needs to be increased to a value in the region of 1.8 to 2.2 in the positive image, which to be warmed will then appear horribly overexposed in the digital sense or blown out on screen. This adjustment usually suffices to remap the relative distribution of levels from most positive digital image files to provide on inversion a negative with sufficient density to be printable by analog processes. So I basically just decided to copy what Prussian Blues did in, in their video um, and I'll link that video below as well because um, I love Prussian Blues videos, really really interesting. So so basically we, we've got the, the levels open, it's this middle this middle setting and we're gonna try 2.2 and okay I was so shocked when I saw this to begin with because the for just that little change um, it was pretty crazy <laughs> so I decided to just open up another levels so I can uh, compare the, the two and this is where I use an adjustment level really really comes in handy so we can see the difference between 1.8 and 2.2 and see if there's any real difference in those levels. And I don't think there really is, to be honest. I think it's much of a muchness. Um, it's definitely a lot lighter than my curves, um, but certainly um, darker than the original. I feel like to get this level of contrast um, whilst keeping detail in the image, especially in the top part, would take just so long um, fiddling about with the curves on your own. And I'm not sure with my experience of um, Chart Throb or Bostigan Sullivan or East Digital Negatives, I just don't think you could, <laughs> I don't think you could get this even. 
So negative looks good, looks good. You can see the detail coming through already it's just really impressive um certainly in those lighter tones i think i don't know it's really hard to say i really like my levels version um but also was just so shocked that this was just so quick um to think that i could take a picture just flipping it put it in photoshop do the levels um, and then get this it's just pretty crazy I wonder whether doing this and then also adding a curves level just to kind of tweak it might be a good shout I might try that again so I don't know that top bit is a bit dark still um, but generally overall I think for how easy that was and I feel like anyone could do that and just get a really really good digital negative so these are my my four so we've got top left is my original picture um, that had no edits on it that's just raw off my, my phone camera um, and then we've got um, on the top right uh, with no edits at all to the negative and then bottom left is my image where I adjusted the curves and then bottom right is the levels so overall I think that went more <laughs> that went better than I was expecting um, and I think it's definitely something that I will go to use in the future um, I think I might try one um, in another video where I'm doing the levels and then also having a little play around with the curves to see whether I can just um, like hone it that little bit more but would definitely make it easier to adjust the curves maybe with that levels adjustment made already so hope that wasn't too long and kind of interesting um curious to see what other people think and what methods other people use and whether they have any any um any luck with using things like chart throb or bostick and sullivan or east digital negatives or i know if you just put in um you know digital negative creator on google you get quite a lot of things now but i think most of them are just kind of putting an image in and just inverting it and and whatever without having to use photoshop um so yeah see you next time <laughs>